And I'd like to point out that uh, you know the organizers of the webinar are uh, uh, Xavier Levesque, uh, who's the uh, chief scientific officer at Imagine Optic in France, uh, Jerome Belasta, uh, who's based in uh, the sales manager in uh, Sacramento, in California, and uh, my name is Philippe Clemenceau, and I am based in uh, Boston, Massachusetts. And so can you trust your wavefront sensor? Well, that's a question we'll try to answer today uh, because uh, we will put uh, the Imagine the Optic wavefront sensor uh, through different tests. Uh, tests of, uh, you know, can we compare it uh, by sending a perfect wavefront? Can we actually see uh, that uh, the wavefront sensor uh, reproduces uh, the reality, how close, how close is it? Um, if we tilt the wavefront, what happens? If we change the wavelength, uh, what happens? Uh, these are some of the things we'll show you today. And so this is uh, a second webinar in a series of three. Uh, first one was on metrology of optical components where we showed the RFLEX system and we showed, you know, uh, measuring aberration through an objective lens and also for a, a zero power large uh, diameter optics. Uh, and the third one will be in a few weeks and it will be mostly on, on adaptive optics. But to start with uh, wavefront sensing, um, it's been there for a while now. Uh, I think, you know, Imagine Optic has started, was, is a pioneer in wavefront sensing and they had uh, one of the first commercial sensors uh, in 1996, I believe. Um, wavefront sensing applications are now numerous and uh, are found in many industries. And, you know, just to list a few of them, uh, we see them mostly in laser beam uh, characterization, uh, looking at the phase distribution across your beam. And it, this could be for research purposes, uh, you know, laser physics, or it could also be for industrial laser uh, to maybe to optimize the, the beam, to have a better focus, a better cut maybe with those lasers. Uh, there's a lot of applications in optical metrology uh, of components, and that could be also for industrial applications. For example, uh, lenses used in cell phones, um, you know, objective lenses for microscopy, objective lenses for photography. Um, but also measurement of components like dichroics, uh, protective, uh, protective gear, protective, uh, protective goggles. Uh, there, are, there are applications in uh, alignment and that concerns really any optical setup that people may have. Uh, as you go through ten, uh, tens of uh, lenses and components, you are degrading your wavefront. And then applications in adaptive optics and these cover you know, telecommunications, uh, especially free space, astronomy, ophthalmology, microscopy, high power lasers, uh, optical coherence, tomography, and so on. Um, so there is, it's, it has now become a very, um, very well-known tool. The outline for this, uh, for this one hour goes this way. Uh, after a short introduction, we'll go uh, to a live demo. Um, we have two setups. Setup one is the has a wavefront sensor observing a perfect wavefront. Perfect wavefront meaning a wavefront coming out of a, a single mode fiber. And we can change that wavefront and see how the wavefront sensor reacts to, to those changes. Setup two is a point spread function comparison setup. And so this means that uh, uh, you know, at some point we generate a, a focal spot. We can we can observe that spot with a camera, so that would be our verification channel. And on the other side, we'll have a wavefront sensor looking at the beam and calculating what that focal spot should look like. And we're going to compare these these two things. Um, so it's very subjective measurements, but very very powerful. Uh, and then we have Q&A on, on, on setup two, sorry. At the end, uh, we will ask everyone, uh, if possible, to stay for the one minute poll. We'll ask you just four questions, basically, uh, after this webinar. I think this will help everyone 
if you want to be contacted after that or what kind of information you need to receive and things like that. And then we'll go through the, uh, the closing remarks. But first, uh, I, I wanted to have just one quick uh, slide about Axiomotic. Some of you uh, know us quite well. Uh, we started in, in 2010, and we now have six salespeople in the US. Uh, we're not just offering imagine optic products. Uh, we're actually a, a full-scale distributor of optical instrumentation. Uh, some of you know us just uh, you know, for activities in wavefront sensing and adaptive optics, but we, we do offer as well like confocal microscopy setups, uh, CCD camera, CMOS, ingas, uh, beam profiling solution, uh, metrology solutions, and so on. And so I encourage everyone to go to uh, you know axiomotics.com to discover uh, all the products we offer. And as part of what we offer, of course, we offer all the Imagine Optic uh, line of products. Uh, actually, Xavier, this is where uh, you take over as a as a you know as a lecturer right here. If you are allowing your microphone, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, so Imagine Optic is dedicated to uh, basically two uh, uh, major fields. One is uh, optical metrology and the other is adaptive optics. So we have a de developed a, a very wide range of reference sensor from uh, X-ray to uh, sphere. Uh, and uh, we have developed two different uh, technology for a different mobile mirror, uh, uh, electromagnetic uh, technology for a small um, uh, uh, deformable mirror and um, mechanical uh, actuators for um, a bigger and very big uh, deformable mirror. Of course, we have also developed all the software uh, to, um, uh, to um, uh, go with our um, Weapon sensor and adaptive optic solutions. And uh, we mainly integrated um, um, our uh, weapon sensor into a um, metro metrological uh, system uh, dedicated to um, application in air industrial R&D and uh, production. And uh, for sure, if uh, what we do have in catalog is not um, convenient for application, we are able to uh, develop custom solutions. So, yeah, yeah uh, to begin, um, I would like to, um, uh, to introduce uh, uh, one of the biggest and um, most expensive mistake made in metrology, and uh, this is Hubble. So it cost uh, more than 100 million of dollars to um, to uh, fix this um, uh, error, and uh, the error was um, uh, due to a uh, um, problem in manufacturing the, um, uh, and characterizing the uh, primary mirror. Uh, for uh, manufacturing the mirror, it was decided to uh, uh, build uh, a new lens. And um, so the, uh, the manufacturing of uh, this mirror was made uh, in, uh, with this uh, new lens. And at the end of uh, this manufacturing process, uh, we, um, they, they decide to have, to, to have a first set of, of tests with uh, the same uh, new lens that was used for the manufacturing. For sure, at the end of this first test, the, the, the result was very good. And uh, they, um, however, decided to, uh, to conduct a second, uh, a second test with a second uh, new lens. And uh, the result was quite different, especially for the radius of curvature of the mirror. But uh, engineer in NASA and in Perkin Elmer Corporation, the manufacturer of the, of the, um, of the mirror, um, was so confident uh, in the first uh, uh, metrology test that they decide to completely ignore the second test. And that was the biggest mistake for sure, because uh, the second test was the right one, not the 
no, the first. And at the end, uh, the image was very blurry and it cost um, very, very expensive to fix it. So uh, let's say that uh, the enemy uh, for uh, any engineer in, in meteorological uh, domain, uh, and especially optical, optical uh, meteorology, um, the enemy is uh, self-confidence. And uh, the writing is always docked and get proof of uh, uh, what you are doing and what the, um, the system you are using tells the truth. And it's what we are going to show um, in this webinar. So two setups are quite simple to, um, to build in order to, um, to, uh, to show um, and, to prove and to see how accurate are the weapon sensor. First of all, I would like to have two uh, words about uh, Shaq Ahman uh, uh, technology. So it's uh, quite a simple technology based on uh, um, micro and, uh, and and CCD or CMOS camera. And as you can see on the slide, there is two examples of waveforms. The first one is a flat waveform, so just a perfect waveform. And in this configuration, all the spots are generated by the micro lens array are uh, perfectly aligned, uh, aligned on the grid. And uh, but when you, when you do have uh, some aberration, uh, the spots are displaced due to a uh, um, um, local slope of the wavefront. And if you are able to measure quite precisely the position of the centroid of each spot, you can have access to the information of the local slopes. And when, when you do have the local slopes, um, it's quite easy to uh, make a numerical integration in order to have the, to have the web font itself. So let's, um, uh, let's see the web font sensor we are going to use for this, um, for this demo. So uh, the web font sensor is a ASO4 broadband. Um, uh, 68 by uh, 50 uh, micron and array. With this kind of resolution, you can have uh, you can measure accurately up to uh, 377 uh, thermic polynomials. This uh, wavefront sensor has very large dynamic range in tilt and focus, and the accuracy is um, lambda of 100. And uh, um, the aim of this um, uh, two uh, uh, setup is to show you that uh, how you can. Uh, you can uh, uh, get the proof that uh, the weapon sensor is uh, as accurate as it's said by the manufacturer. So let's see the first, uh, the first setup. So the first setup is a simplest one. It's only, uh, excuse me. Sorry, my bad. Could you take back, please? Okay, so... Uh, this setup is very simple. It's um, mainly um, two uh, things, one, uh, one source and, uh, and the waveform sensor itself. And uh, the, the, the aim is to um, uh, compare what the waveform sensor are going to, uh, to say to a perfect waveform. And uh, the most convenient perfect waveform we can easily produce is a spherical waveform. This can be done just with a hole that is uh, diffraction limited or with a single mode fiber. Here we are going to use a single mode fiber with a dial laser in order to produce this uh, perfect spherical wavefront. And uh, uh, we will have uh, and we will have the wavefront sensor measuring this perfect wavefront. And the answer will be, uh, do we have a perfect spherical wavefront or not? For sure, we will be able to, uh, to move the weapon sensor and the source in order to, uh, to have different uh, configuration in tilt and focus, and in order to, uh, to, um, to see all the performances in terms of um, uh, um, dynamic range uh, we, uh, we can have with this weapon sensor. So, uh, I propose to, uh, to begin uh, the, uh, this demo with uh, 
uh, this first setup. So in a while you, you will have the live the live uh, image. Uh, I'm sorry, but it takes some time. So meanwhile, um, what uh, a few words about uh, this wave function sensor we are going to use. So uh, it's a broadband wave function sensor that it can measure um, uh, from uh, 250 nanometers to more than 100 and uh, 1,100 nanometers. So the whole spectrum of uh, of uh, silicon. But uh, for sure, the same technology can be used with other. Uh, camera and especially with uh, with near and sphere uh, camera and uh, like that we, we, we do have uh, uh, the same technology and the same performances so uh, longer than 100 uh, uh, even with uh, with sphere um, uh, wavelengths around uh, 1.5 micron okay I think uh, Patrick you need to take to take uh, no, the, the no, presentation no, I, now technical difficulties. I cannot broadcast uh, the screen I'm supposed to. Uh, and I don't <laughs> okay. see a solution in front of me. So this okay. is getting a bit complicated. <laughs> okay. So could yes. you please take it back, uh, go back to the... Uh, I'm going to connect either the webinar and come back. Okay. Okay. No problem. Thanks. I mean, I think what we what we can what we can mention at this point is, you know, as uh, as uh, Xavier, Xavier said, you know, this is you know the Hazel broadband, yes, but you know, imagine Otik as uh, is designing all these wavefront sensors with uh, with the goal of having uh, the, the best accuracy and dynamic range possible. And so it's, it doesn't just concern the this particular wavefront sensors. So you'll see that if I show you this, for example, uh, that's the lineup of sensors. And um, you know, here there's a there's a short wave infrared wavefront sensor, same specifications, lambda over 100. Wavefront sensors can have different uh, different resolutions, different aperture, different speed. And, you know, because um, each application is different. And so we have a, a number of wavefront sensors that are dedicated for each application. You know, if you want something more affordable, uh, but uh, fast, then there's a ASO 4 first. Uh, things like the ASO 3 128 have a very large aperture, 14.6 by 14.6. So this could be good for large laser beams. This could be also very good for metrology applications because it's 128 by 128. Um, micro lenses, uh, but if you want to go fast, then there's the ASO4 fast with one kilohertz and ex extremely uh, only I, I believe 16 by 16 micro lenses, but extremely sensitive uh, with a, with a camera that has very very low readout noise and a lot of uh, a lot of collection. So. You know everything that we're seeing today. We are we can totally translate this to any wavelength that that you want, any speed that you need. It's not particular to the the wavefront sensor that uh, we're seeing. And so, having said that, maybe Patrick, your your yes, I'm gonna try it again. Yeah, let's try again. Yeah, this time should work. Okay, here we go. Right. <laughs> so, now it's good. So let, let, let's see uh, the bench. So as I said, it's really, really simple. Just the, mono, uh, the single mode fiber and the reference sensor. So the best thing is to compare what are going to say the reference sensor to the perfect waveform. So let's have a look on the, uh, on the software here right now. So here you do have the uh, uh, zoom on the on the spots uh, given by the microns. And you, you can see the, the diffraction of the microns. 
uh, that is a, a small cross for each uh, spot. And uh, thanks to uh, this information, uh, we are measuring the local slope and we are making the integration, uh, numerical integration to give uh, this uh, wavefront, uh, this uh, spherical wavefront with quite a big amount of, uh, of, um, of lambda uh, because we do have something like uh, 45, um, um, 45 micron of, uh, of uh, uh, phase uh, uh, modification. So now what we are going to see is how accurate is the weapon sensor. So I will just remove by uh, software the influence of a tilt on, on the on the x-axis and then the tilt on the y-axis And, okay, so it's very, very, very slow, just because of the, um, the broadcast of, uh, of the... Um... Yeah, I'm sorry, we're, we're <clears throat> I'm sorry for the attendees, for whatever reason this afternoon we're having, a, this afternoon in France, we're having a lot of trouble with uh, the Zoom meeting software. Sorry about that. Okay, and, and now if we remove the focus, that is uh, the last aberration we have to remove to see uh, the uh, residual wavefront. We do see that the wavefront is uh, less than uh, a, a few micron, a few uh, nanometer. So I, uh, here it's five nanometers. That is to say that the residual um, compared to the perfect wavefront is uh, five nanometers. So that is to say, it's lambda over. It's better, slightly better than lambda over uh, 100 because uh, I am using uh, a wavelength that is uh, uh, um, 600 and, and, and 78 nanometers. That the simplest thing we can do: just put a perfect wavefront that we know to be a perfect wavefront and see the result of the wavefront. For sure, now we can push a little bit the limit and see how uh, uh, the result can be if we are close to the uh, dynamic range, limit of the dynamic range of the, of the wavefront sensor. So I will, I'm going to tilt by hand the wavefront sensor in order to have many, many more uh, uh, tilt on, on the wavefront sensor, and you can see uh, here the number of micron I am adding here. So uh, it's already more than one degree, uh, and the wavefront is still uh, very, very, very good. Uh, but we can have more and more and more, and you can see that now it's uh, more than two degree, and it's still very, very good wavefront. And we can produce up to three degrees, and you can see that it's still quite perfect. So here, uh, it's a, a way to uh, to see how you can push the limit in tilt for this uh, example here, uh, and 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 see uh, what is the the uh, the answer of the wavefront sensor. For sure, uh, to, to, to do uh, this such a uh, big tilt, uh, we, we, we do have a technology behind that that is able to follow uh, each spot very carefully. And um, uh, we, we have to follow this spot very, very carefully because uh, the spot behind one, uh, micronaut is number one, will, will go uh, behind microlens number two and main, uh, num micro microlens num number three, when we put uh, three degrees, and we have to follow this, even if the spot is not is no longer under uh, the the microlens will produce this spot. Uh, now I would like to show you uh, a modification of the uh, of the focus. So here. Uh, let's uh, see the focus on the viewing. 
So it's quite low. That's low. Okay, so we, we, we see uh, the focus. So uh, the focus is a little bit more than 30 micron here. And I will I will um, take the weapon sensor and, and put it very close to, uh, to, the, uh, to the source, like this. And I have to adapt uh, the, the light, for sure. And now you can see that uh, the, uh, the, the, the peak to valet uh, is, um, is much bigger because it's more than 100 micron. And now, if I remove uh, the focus from the viewing, you will see the result in a few moments. Yeah, we do it, we do it. So we, 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 we can see here that even with a huge tilt, even with a huge tilt, the uh, wavefront is very, very good, less than 10 nanometers RMS. And here you, uh, you can see on the intensity that the intensity is uh, not flat at all. There is a huge dynamic range in the intensity due to uh, the Gaussian uh, going, uh, going at the output of the single mode fiber. And even with a, a, huge, a huge curvature, big tilt, because we do have 12, uh, 12 uh, milliradian of tilts here, I can reduce this a little bit. Yeah, uh, too, too fast. Sorry for that. So even with a huge curvature, big tilt, and a huge variation of intensity, we do have uh, the, this weapon center has the capability to uh, to measure very accurately uh, uh, this perfect uh, weapon. And the last thing I would like to show you on this bench is uh, the capability to uh, to have uh, uh, multispectral uh, uh, multispectral uh, measurement. So here we are we we are using here a, a, a sword that is at a, a 650 nanometers, and I will switch to go with uh, a, a, a green a green a green light. At five uh, around five hundred nanometers, okay. And now, with this, the uh, the wave front is. Four nanometers RMS. I don't know why these are not refreshing. I do it again. Okay. So here now is refreshing and the wavefront, uh, uh, the residual wavefront compared to the perfect spherical wavefront, it's four nanometers. So once again, better than lambda over 100. So you can see here with pretty nothing except the wavefront sensor and the single mode fiber, you can have a, a quite uh, good overview of, uh, of uh, the capability of a weapon sensor. For sure, with a, a little bit more complex uh, setup with, uh, uh, with um, uh, motorized uh, trans translation stage or rotation stage, you can even uh, easily uh, add 
uh, have a, a good idea of the, um, of the linearity of, uh, of the wave function tensor. This one, the linearity of this wave function tensor is better than 99.9%. Uh, so it's very, very, very linear. And it's quite important when you do, uh, when you want to have a, a very good wave function tensor. But you, you will have all this information in, uh, in an application note uh, that uh, uh, we will give you at the end of, uh, of this, um, of this uh, session, of this demonstration. So that's it for this uh, first uh, demo bench. And if you have any question, I will be more than happy to answer. Thanks, Xavier. So yeah, we've got a, a couple of uh, interesting questions. <clears throat> First question is about the um, the uh, spot tracker. Uh, is this technology already in place in the sensors? How is it going to be um, introduced? Is there already some sensors that are um, equipped or upgraded with that feature? Exactly. Excuse me. The spot tracker. Is it? Is there already some sensor that were delivered with it? Is it going to be like a, simply a, a software? How does it work? No, as a spot tracker, it's a new uh, it's a new technology uh, that will uh, arrive on on the market right now, and uh, it's uh, it's a way to uh, to have a very easily a very easily way to uh, to get an absolute uh, measurement, even for tilt measurement. Okay, so it's gonna come with the next uh, sensors. The next. Well, sensor. with this one, basically. Okay. The other question is, um, what is the uncertainty uh, on the measured uh, slope uh, for one sub aperture for the whole sensor? And uh, let's take the case of that sensor that you have right now and something like the uh, HSOHP, just to give a, um, a range of like different, different type of sensitivity. Okay, so um, um, if you are talking about accuracy, the accuracy is about 10 micro, micro radian per, per uh, uh, superficial micro lens. And in terms of sensitivity, it's uh, much, be much better for sure. It's uh, around one micro region. And that's for one sub aperture. Well, yeah, for one sub aperture. It's better, when, of course. And uh, could, do you have in mind how much uh, sensitive or and accurate uh, was the uh, HSO HP with a longer uh, focal length, for instance? Um, I, I, I'm not sure I'm, I'm catching your uh, your question. Um, you how, 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 more, how much more sensitive was the HSO HP? Just to give like some kind of like a, a range between a standard sensor and uh, the uh, most performant sensor. Okay, we have, we have developed a different sensor and we, with different sensitivity and. Uh, the best we have done right now for visible range is uh, a, a, a system that is better than lambda over 1000 in terms of uh, sensitivity and accuracy, both. And uh, in terms of dynamic range, uh, one, uh, the one we are, the, the, the biggest one is uh, uh, um, a sensor that can uh, accept to have more than 100 diopters of uh, focus. Okay, thank you. I think you can go ahead with the, the, the setup number two. This is where I'm becoming a uh, presenter here and putting back the presentation, okay? So hold on one second. All right, setup number two, here we go. Okay, Xavier, you still need to comment on so, this. So uh, uh, the setup number yes. two is um, quite simple too, a little bit more complex than the, 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 the first one, but easy to build 
and easy to uh, to um, uh, and e it's easy to have the result with it, uh, a good result and a, a good information about uh, the quality of the reference sensor. So here we are in a situation where we don't know uh, exactly uh, the wavefront we are going to measure. It's not a perfect wavefront anymore because we are going through a lens. And as you can see on the, on the, on the drawing, uh, we are going to use a single mode fiber. Uh, and this fiber will go through a lens and the lens will focalize uh, the, the light uh, in two ways. Uh, first ways um, uh, in reflection on the beam sliver is a uh, way uh, where the beam will be uh, focalized on a far field camera thanks to a microscope object objective. And this uh, far field camera will, will produce and will give us the truth and the true t a p a point spread function, PSF. And the second way is um, uh, uh, in transmission through the beam slitter. Uh, the beam will, uh, will be uh, focalized uh, before the wavefront sensor and the uh, beam will enter directly the wavefront sensor after the focalization. Um, and uh, the beam uh, will be analyzed uh, with the wavefront sensor. So we will get uh, the, the wavefront uh, from the measurement. And, and in order to know if the wavefront is uh, uh, the truth or not, um, we, we, are, we are going to make the calculation uh, thanks to this wavefront. And, uh, and in order to get um, a, a second PSF. And um, um, the fact uh, that we, uh, that, that, that the fact <clears throat> that we are going to, uh, to compare is uh, uh, how, how, how well uh, the calculation is compar comparable to, uh, to the, uh, the true creator. And um, just a few words about uh, the calculation. It is a calculation that is done with, uh, with a, a Fresnel, uh, in the, with the Fresnel's rules. So it's now uh, quite simple because it's uh, quite as simple as a, a simple uh, uh, Fourier transform. And now we can have a, a look about how sensitive this uh, subjective, uh, su subjective uh, comparison can be. Because in one end, we, we will have a real PSF, and in the other end, we will have a calculated PSF from the weapon sensor. Here in this slide, you, 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 you do have two, uh, two uh, different um, PSF. Uh, the PSF on, on the left is calculated with 14 nanometers of um, astigmatism and 13 nanometers of coma. And on the right side of the slide, you will have uh, a PSF um, that is simulated with the same waveform, but in this wavefront, we had only six nanometers of trefoil. And as you can see, you can see by, by your eyes that the PSF are slightly different. They are not exactly the same. That means that this uh, subjective method can give you uh, 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 an estimate of how accurate is the wavefront tensor thanks to the PSF that is calculated from the wavefront that is measured. And it's what we are going to show you right now. Okay, so I'll just let you take over. Good. Yeah. So now I am going to move the wavefront sensor from the first, first bench to the other bench. So it's quite easy to do that for me because there is uh, some uh, mechanical reference here with a magnet and, and, and like this, I, I can replace uh, the, the wavefront sensor at the exact place and I don't need to have uh, to, to, to make any uh, alignment. So, 
Now, we do have the measurement. We do have in one end uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, intensity that is important to uh, intensity important to uh, to get the uh, to get the, the PSF because we are going to use both uh, intensity and phase in order to uh, to, uh, to calculate the PSF. And here we are supposed to add the waveform measurement, but I don't know why we don't have a refresh of this uh, screen. So I'm going to switch off everything here just to get okay. We do have the word from. So as I, as I said, is not a, a perfect way from because you can see here uh, on the shape given by the word from sensor, the shape of the phase that uh, we, we can see uh, a spherical aberration and small coma in a vertical direction. Uh, the peak to valley aberration is uh, three, a little bit more than 300 nanometers, and uh, uh, the RMS is about uh, 100, a little bit less than 100 nanometers. Now, thanks to these two information, phase and intensity, we are going to uh, calculate uh, the, the PSF. And is the PSF here? So, that is the calculated PSF, and here is the real PSF measured by the, uh, by the camera. So I can, I can hide the camera, the far field camera, so you don't see the PSF anymore. And now you can see the PSF because I move my hand. <coughs> So now let's have a look on how can we compare these two PSF. So uh, in order to see uh, the rings, uh, the, the, uh, the PSF are saturating in both, in both cases. And uh, you can see that uh, uh, for sure uh, uh, the main, uh, main spot is identical, but even the, the first ring here and the second ring are identical. And now in order to, uh, to uh, to, to see a little bit more, uh, I will add some aberration because I have a, a rotation behind uh, behind the lens, the, the lens. So when I, I'm going to, to make uh, a rotation and like this, I put some aberration, more aberration, more coma, more astigmatism. And now we are, we, we do have about, uh, about, um, uh, uh, one lambda of aberration, and you can see here the main spot. But here, the first ring is like two bumps, and you can find the two bumps identical here. And the second ring and the third ring are even exact, exactly the same on the calculated PSF compared to the truth that is that is given by the far field camera. Because here, the main thing is that the far-field camera is actually looking at uh, the PSF through the, the microscope objective. And um, uh, the, the, the far-field camera is telling the truth some, somehow. And what we can say is that the far-field camera doesn't lie. And the fact here is even if I put more and more aberration, you have exactly the same evolution of the uh, uh, calculated PSF that you can see on the uh, real PSF. Uh, I, I can go the other direction in terms of rotation in order to add the somewhere somehow the opposite aberration. And you will see the evolution of the truth and the calculated PSF are exactly the same with the same uh, rings, first ring, second ring, and third ring. So here, with this simple uh, uh, camera looking at the PSF, I can say that 
uh, what is actually uh, um, measuring by the wavefront sensor is the truth. And the, the last thing I, I would like to show you, because I, I like this quite a lot, is to uh, introduce um, a, a mask on, on, on the pupil. And like this, you will see both the evolution of the intensity, the phase. Now you do have the PSF with this uh, star. And you can see here that with this star, we do have exactly the same, uh, the same, uh, the same PSF that is calculated. I can a little bit more. Now you, you, you can, we, we, we can, we can see we do have the, the same bumps on, on the first ring. We do have this little Q here, here, uh, everything exactly the same. And here, we don't have to do anything, just the, the, the weapon sensor is measuring where the light is. There is no need to, uh, to, to, uh, to have a mask, to, uh, to, to design something, to, it's just automatic. Where the light is, the weapon sensor is measuring. That's why uh, I encourage you to, uh, to uh, to test your wavefront sensor and, and, and in order to have the proof that what the wavefront sensor is telling you is the truth because at the end you will need to believe it. So just believe it in conscience. So that means have the proof that is telling the truth. And it's why uh, I, I, I propose you uh, this I, I've proposed you these two setups that, that are quite easy to um, to um, to uh, to mount and, and, and it's very easy to have the results. Okay, so thank you, uh, thank you, Xavier. Le let me take over here. Uh, uh, you know, uh, everyone, uh, please. Uh, I, I see there are some good questions. Uh, continue to have questions. We'll have a Q and A on this in like in like two minutes. Uh, we have another ten minutes to spend together. So let me uh, let me go back to some a few slides here. There you go. So this is a uh, boil. Well, okay. So this is another example of cross instrument comparison. This is on the left. You can see uh, what was done with an interferometer, a zygo, which I think is one of the references that are used in the industry today. This is what was done with the ISO 4 R flex. This was done with the Subaru telescope. So I, I need to point out though that, you know, uh, an interferometer is not really measuring a wavefront. It's it's measuring the difference between two wavefronts. Huh? So uh, if your reference also has some issues, uh, you, you could find things that are very different from a wavefront sensor. So that, that that's a big difference. Uh, the, the the wavefront sensor does not, uh, you know, it, it just needs one beam, not not two. Uh, but in this case, the people who doing the who did the research. Uh, who did those measurements were able to fully correlate these two instruments, which uh, I think is, is very helpful to know. And so, um, you know, just to, just to summarize this and then we'll get to the Q&A, we've showed very simple setups to evaluate a, a wavefront system performance. Uh, setup one with, you know, a perfect wavefront coming out of a single mode fiber we can move it, we could show the, the, the uh, behavior of the wavefront sensor through tilt, through aggressive focus, I mean, very short focus or long, long or collimated beams, for example. And we could see very good, uh, you know, with the shark Hartman and the, the imagine optic sensors, we could see that the accuracy was lambda over 100 over a whole range. We changed the wavelength. We saw that uh, we could also see the same wavefront error. So these are very simple setups that you can put in place to, to, to make sure the wavefront sensor is working well. 
uh, in the second setup, then we it's more like a, a subjective uh, setup where you could just see the the, 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 the point spread functions. And, but that's very powerful because a tiny difference actually means that there was a difference in the wavefronts that were measured. Um, and, uh, you know, through all this, we saw that uh, we showed high accuracy and repeatability of the system. Um, you know, I want also to point out that uh, vibrations are not an issue for wavefront sensors. Um, Unless, you know, unless, of course, you know, through the exposure time, there was too many vibrations and maybe there was a blurring of the, but, you know, we could do, you know, Xavier didn't show it to you, but uh, you could uh, have a lambda of a 100 in quite, uh, you know, on just a regular, basically conference table. That's, that's, uh, we do that every day with, with the wavefront sensors. And so the, the advantages of our, of the Hazo uh, product is, 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 as you could see, accuracy, it's very simple and robust, meaning that, you know, when you manipulate, uh, when you measure a beam, you're not going to have any surprise. Oh, what was the tilt? Do I need to change what, you know, is my wavefront sensor going to give me some, some error there because there was too much tilt and so on because the mask, you know, was not right or things like that. Um, well, in fact, I think we, we can really show that it's a very, very robust uh, measurement. Uh, we have an, ap an application note on absolute measurement, which kind of summarizes these things, and it's on the Imaginaptic website. And uh, our next webinar will be on adaptive optics. Um, next is the lineup of sensors. We've already seen that, so if you want, uh, we could um, uh, we could go through through a second Q and A, Jerome. So I've got a, an interesting question. Um, but I'm not sure if we are talking of, uh, so I'm being asked, we are being asked uh, what are the benefits or comparison uh, compared to um, a, le a lateral uh, sharing wavefront sensor. Um, so Xavier, please, um, could you help us with that? For sure, um, uh, Shaq Ahman uh, wavefront sensor has many advantages compared to uh, lateral sharing interferometer. First of all, uh, as you have seen, um, it's uh, completely achromatic. Uh, the, the spatial resolution doesn't depend on the wavelengths. Um, the, uh, you don't need to, uh, to design any mask uh, in order to have the web front. Um, here, everything is automatic about the detection of the pupil. Um, so, and in final, the resolution uh, and, and in, in terms of sensitivity and, and accuracy in phase, uh, all the all the measurement uh, comparison with uh, uh, with, with uh, uh, sharing interferometer show a superior result uh, from our technology uh, and Chakarman technology integrated by 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 ourselves. What about the the liner right here? Of what about the linearity of the Jack Altman uh, versus the uh, linearity of the... Uh... It's not always the same story. Uh, when it's simple, it's, it's easy to, uh, to get a, a very, very good result. And here, um, uh, the simplicity of, uh, of this technology allows us to, uh, to get um, more than 99.9% .9 of linearity. 